Here in America, the CRV has always been one of the top selling compact crossovers you can buy. What started out as a science experiment for Honda about 23 years ago has evolved to become one of the best selling SUVs that you can buy in this segment. And in Honda's light truck sales, the CRV represents about 60% of their North American light truck portfolio. Now, over the years, Honda has made quite some significant changes to the CRV, making it larger, making it more comfortable, making it more spacious, making it more safe, and making it more powerful. However, they have failed to add one technology that the CRV has needed for years, and that's an electrified powertrain. For 2020, that finally changes with the addition of the all new CRV hybrid. It uses the same two motor hybrid system that powers the Accord hybrid, and it represents two firsts for Honda as a brand. It's the first ever electrified SUV in their lineup, and it's the first ever electrified hybrid vehicle that offers all wheel drive. Honda says this version of the CRV is the most powerful and the most fuel efficient model at up to 40 MPG in the city. So to test out this all new CRV hybrid, I'm here in Tucson, Arizona. And the big question I want to answer, if you guys are looking to add a CRV to your garage, is the all new hybrid version the one to get? That's what we're here to find out. So we've waited a long time for a hybridized version of the CRV, and I'm really glad that it's finally here. So I'm gonna first start with talking about what's powering the CRV hybrid. Now, if you guys have driven the all new Accord hybrid, this powertrain will seem very familiar to you because it essentially is the same powertrain. It's gonna start with a two liter four cylinder gas engine. It's a naturally aspirated engine. It's got their VTEC technology. It runs on the Atkinson cycle. This engine on its own makes about 143 horsepower and 129 pound feet of torque. Now, of course, it's got a two motor hybrid system um, so it's gonna have an electric motor that adds about 181 horsepower and 232 pound-feet of torque. Now, of course, you can't just do the math, simple math, and add the two numbers together. Honda says the combined output is 212 horsepower and 232 pound-feet of torque. That easily makes the CRV hybrid the most powerful version of the CRV they've ever offered. It's probably the first, it's actually the first time that we've seen a CRV with over 200 horsepower. Now, another thing about this car, it's standard with the company's real-time four-wheel drive system, and it actually has a mechanical linkage between the engine and the actual drive train, unlike the RAV4 hybrid, which this competes with, which has a separate electric motor that, motor that powers the rear wheels, this vehicle actually will have full-time all-wheel drive, even if the batteries are dead. Now, the transmission of this car is a very complicated matter, and to help me explain what the transmission on this car is, I'm bringing over Alex Dykes from Alex on Autos. Alex, can you please explain to me what the transmission is in this car? Because I've seen conflicting reports of it yeah. being a CVT and a direct drive transmission. So, in the truest sense of the word, this doesn't have a transmission, and that's kind of where it gets a little tricky. So, so we have the gasoline engine, two liter gasoline engine. It is directly connected to a generator unit. The mm -hmm. generator unit can start the engine or it can generate power. Okay. And then it will send the power over to the 181 horsepower electric motor. So below 45 miles an hour, the only thing that can ever drive you down the road is the 181 horsepower electric motor. Okay. That gives you the 232 pound feet of torque. And it pulls its power from the battery in the back and from the generator that's attached to the engine. But what makes this a little interesting is that over about 45 miles an hour or so, it can connect a clutch between the engine and that final electric motor, and it can drive the vehicle using just the gasoline engine via a fixed ratio. So that's why some people say fixed ratio, and some people say CVT. No CVT, no belt and pulley thing under the hood. Uh, when they say CVT, they're talking about the fact that the engine can be spinning at whatever RPM you want, mm -hmm. generating power, sending it to the other electric motor. Now, the weird thing about it is that there's just that one fixed ratio between the engine and, and wheels. So you can think of that sort of like a fifth gear on an automatic transmission. Okay. So as you go faster, the engine's going to have to be spinning, you know, faster to do that. So it's going to be a little less efficient at highway speeds than the Toyota system. That's why we see three miles per gallon on the highways, I recall, okay. below the RAV4. So basically what you're saying is the transmission functions as both kind of like a CVT, but not in the traditional sense, but right. also like a direct drive transmission, yeah. depending on whether it's running on electricity or the gas exactly. engine. So this is one of the few true serial hybrids out on the market. So, uh, you know, engine generating power, generator connected to it, generating electricity, that's sending over to the electric motor that's actually driving the vehicle forward. Okay, well, it all sounds like very complicated stuff, but you're probably wondering what's the actual fuel economy of this new CRV hybrid? Well, it's rated at 40 in the city and 35 on the highway, which are very good numbers. It's about a nine MPG improvement over the gas only CRV. Yep. So, very good numbers. However, it is about two to three down versus the RAV4 hybrid. And I suspect it has to do with the fact that the all wheel drive system in this car is mechanical. It's probably yep. adding in some drag, but 38 MPG is definitely nothing to sneeze at. This car is roughly about 
200 pounds heavier than the gas here, be at around 3,700 pounds. This version is also not rated to tow. So in the gas model, you can tow about 1,500 pounds. This one does not tow anything. So if you want to actually tow, be sure to get the gas only version. So now that we've gotten the complicated powertrain specs out of the way, let's talk about the design of the CRV hybrid in relation to the gas only version. Now, obviously, you guys should be pretty familiar with this fifth generation CRV. It's been on the market since 2017. And for 2019, Honda gave the CRV some pretty significant updates. Uh, the hybrid version, again, and gets some smaller updates to kind of differentiate it from the gas model. The one big thing that I'm noticing, full LED headlights are standard on every CRV hybrid. Even the base version, you can see these are kind of the same LED headlights that you used to get on the touring versions. You have an LED daytime running light, you have LED turn signals. They look very expensive. They look like they were pulled right off of the Acura with their Juli LEDs. The front grille also has a slightly different finish. The blue Honda badge is included when you guys go for the hybrid model. That's how you're gonna tell this is the hybrid version. And the hybrid also has a unique fog light setup. If you guys go for the EX and up trims, you'll have these unique five LED diode uh, fog lights that are kind of horizontal versus the round fog lights that you get on the gas only version. Overall, let me know what you guys think of the design. I don't really like the new lower front fascia of the CRV, the refreshed version. It kind of looks like it has braces or kind of this weird little accent here at the bottom. I don't think that that was kind of necessary, but again, it's a nice refresh overall. It makes the CRV look a little bit more uh, expensive. Now coming around to the side, really there's only one indication that this is a hybrid version. There's a small little hybrid badge here on the fender, but everywhere else you can see this looks identical to the gas only CRV. Right down to the wheels, this touring trim comes with a 19 inch wheel. It's an inch bigger than what you're gonna get in the EX trims. They're wrapped in 235 with tires. Now these tires, you should um, note that are about 10 millimeters wider than the same tires you get on a RAV4. That is going to, of course, give us a little bit better grip, but it's also going to lower the fuel economy slightly, which is why this car probably has a little bit lower fuel economy versus the RAV4. Honda says the ground clearance of this car is around 8.2 inches, which is pretty good. Actually, a little bit more than what I expected it to be, considering I doubt most owners are gonna be taking this thing off-road. I literally got footage of you running over that poor plant. You have grind, we're going to have greenies call. <laughs> now, the one interesting feature about the CRV hybrid is the fact that when you're driving this thing at low speeds on electric power alone, Honda has included or is producing an augmented noise. Now this noise is going to be required for a lot of electric cars to kind of let pedestrians know that you are driving around so you don't run over people. And when you basically turn the car on, I don't know if you guys are going to be able to hear it, but just put the car into drive. at low speeds, and when you put it in reverse, it gets even louder. It's a very strange noise, and it's a little overpowering. I can hear it very well from the inside of the car. So again, very interesting safety feature. You're gonna be seeing that on a lot of electrified cars in the coming years. It's gonna be a government mandated thing. Now, the CRV hybrid in general is the same size as the gas CRV. It's wheelbase at 104.7 inches long. It's on the shorter end for the segment and 182 inches long. This is about uh, two inches longer than the current generation RAV4 hybrid and a little bit longer is, uh, than the Ford Escape hybrid, this vehicle's main competition. Now, coming over to the rear again, very little indication that you're driving the hybrid version. The refreshed CRV, of course, has these new smoked, darked out LED taillights. The taillight assembly is mostly LED except for the reverse lights. That's just an incandescent bulb. Even the turn signals are LED, which is nice. Uh, you can see down here, there's a very subtle hybrid badge over here to let you know that you're the hybrid model. And then underneath the rear bumper, you can see there's some chrome trim here that tries to make it look like an exhaust. Honda got rid of the exhaust, the dual chrome exhaust on the gas model and kind of hid the exhaust underneath the bumper. I'm okay with that because this is the hybridized version. You can see the touring trim also includes uh, these nicely integrated rear parking sensors. There's the prerequisite cladding that you typically find on a lot of crossovers. I think it actually looks good. It's not overpowering and it really complements this new radiant red exterior color, which is the new color option uh, this year. Now looking at the cargo area, a lot of you are probably wondering, did the lithium ion batteries in this thing start to eat into the cargo space? Well, Honda says it didn't, but if you actually look at the numbers, it is slightly smaller versus the gas only version. With all the seats up, you can see here, CRVs have never offered a third row. You get around 33 cubic feet of space. That's about six cubic feet less than what you get in the gas only version, which offers about 39 cubic feet of space. Now, if you fold down all the seats, which you can actually fold down from this little area here, if you just pull this lever, 
Um, that expands the cargo capacity to around 68 cubic feet of space. That is pretty good, but remember, the gas-only version offers about 75 cubic feet of space. And then if you look underneath the floor here, there is no temporary spare tire, of course. The batteries are going to be living underneath here, uh, so you're going to have to deal with a fix-a-flat kit. So the exterior of the CRV hybrid doesn't look all that different from the gas-only version, but what about the interior? Well, getting inside the hybrid version, you can see Shutting the door, it's, it sounds the same when you shut the door, it has that solid thunk. And then you can see here, here's the standard Honda key fob. The smart key access system is included on this touring version. I believe it's an option. Uh, you have to go for an EX trim and up to get it. It also includes remote start. Uh, you guys know how to start up a vehicle like this. Just keep the key fob in here. Let the vehicle start up. And because this is a hybrid, there's no traditional starter noise. Again, this is the first time that we're seeing a hybridized version of the CRV. So this is very new, especially for those of you who've had a CRV in the past. This is the first time we're getting something like this. Now, looking at the rest of this interior, you can see the CRV has had a very nice interior. It's very spacious, it's very comfortable. The seats are also uh, pretty uh, accommodating. They're very soft leather. They're also just heated three ways. Honda does, uh, does not offer uh, cooled seats like on some competitors. You do get two person members on the driver's side here it's like a 12-way power adjustable seat which is nice the passenger here only gets a four-way power passenger seat so uh, keep that in mind if you guys want are looking for like an eight-way power seat the rest of this interior however looks pretty similar there's only a couple of changes here versus the gas only version right here you're going to see there's a push button transmission selector for that very strange transmission that has characteristics of a cvt and a single speed reduction gear you can see push that to go reverse. You can get a backup camera on this car, which is nice. It has the three different views. It has trajectory, it has rear cross traffic alert, but if you're looking for a top-down 360 camera, Honda does not offer that. This is fairly easy to use. We've seen this push button transmission selector in other Hondas versus that gear lever you get in the regular CRV. Um, the instrument panel is also slightly unique to the hybrid version. You can see it's got these two new LED displays for the battery charge indicator and for the fuel gauge over here. So that's new. Uh, this display over here is also slightly tweaked. You still got kind of like a LCD display in the center. It's now an all digital display, which is nice versus before you had kind of like an analog look to the fuel gauge and the engine temp gauge in the regular petrol version. Now the steering wheel you can see here, it also tilts and telescopes, which is nice. You also get a heated steering wheel when you guys go for the touring version. It offers a very, very good amount of adjustability. This car in general is just very comfortable. It's one of the reasons why it's such a top seller. The materials are pretty much the same. You have this faux stitching with the piano black plastic. This wood trim is not convincing anybody. It feels especially fake when you touch it, uh, although it doesn't look terribly bad. It's just kind of like a little too much. I wish Honda had gone with like a carbon fiber look trim or an aluminum look trim instead. Um, the infotainment system in this car is the same seven inch Honda Link infotainment system. Now, as you can see, it includes Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, which is nice, but come on Honda, this screen is just very, very puny. It's very small. One of the smallest screens in the segment, they did add, or this was one of the first cars that also included a volume knob, although I wish it had a tuning knob. You have these touch sensitive buttons over here where you can go to your home display. As you can see, there's the older Honda Link system. It's very slow at times. It will actually make my phone freeze sometimes when I'm using the CarPlay. So I'm very disappointed to see Honda has not updated this. Keep that in mind, Honda will probably do that for the next generation model, which the Accord has a much better system overall. You can see there's dual zone climate control over here. You have your three level heated seats and electronic parking brake. There's your drive mode selector over here. There's a sport mode, there's an eco mode, and then there's a full EV mode, which this car will basically allow the engine to be shut off and drive on electric power alone up to freeway speeds. It kind of depends on the throttle application. You have to be very conservative with your output, uh, which we'll talk about that later on in the drive. They added a wireless phone charger to the refresh CRV last year, which is definitely nice. It even includes this kind of slip resistant area so your phone doesn't slide around. And then you have two cup holders over here. And then the center console here is also been kind of redesigned. You can see there's still a very large bin over here, but you can actually take this little thing out here. Whereas in the past, it was a little bit more clumsy to use. You can see it kind of just folds down and then it slides forward to cover everything up if you'd like. So it's nice that they redesigned this to kind of give it a little bit more functionality. This armrest here also kind of will slide forward and back. It's a very padded area, uh, which is nice. And then above me here, you can see the CRV does not offer a panoramic sunroof, which would have been nice to have. You have to go for an Acura, of course, to get that feature. They also don't offer a heads up display. So that's something to keep in mind if you guys are looking for those features. But overall, the hybrid's interior is very comfortable, very spacious, very easy to use. The sound system in this car is just a nine speaker Honda premium sound system. It's nothing terribly fancy. So I recommend looking at the competitors if you're looking for something like a Harman Kardon or JBL or Bose uh, upgraded audio system. Now, what makes the CRV such a popular vehicle with families is when you get into the second row of this vehicle, it is quite frankly, 
one of the largest in the segment. Honda says you get around just under 40 inches of legroom back here, which is about two to three inches more than what you find in the Escape Hybrid and the RAV4 Hybrid. As you can see at five foot seven, this is a back seat that I wouldn't hesitate to be in on longer trips. There's plenty of legroom. There's a completely flat floor back here. There's plenty of foot space. Um, you have these two USB chargers over here, which is nice. You have two rear seat air vents, but no set of actual rear seat climate controls. Remember, it's a dual zone system, not a tri-zone system like in some of the luxury cars. Now, opening up this armrest here, you can see there are two cup holders over here, a nice padded armrest. And then the materials back here are kind of hard touch plastic. You have that faux stitching, but it's a hard touch plastic. Um, other than that, though, it looks fairly nice. You just have one map pocket over here. So uh, a lot of more storage over here in the lower parts of the door pocket, which is nice. The seat back here also does recline ever so slightly um, to get help you get a little more comfortable but if you're looking to slide the seat forward and back something the new Ford Escape Hybrid offers the CRV does not do that so overall if you're looking for a family vehicle you got to put child seats back here or carry full-size adults the CRV has one of the biggest back seats in the segment so we're out here in Tucson Arizona which is about two hours south of Phoenix and I'm super confused because it's raining today in the desert and it typically doesn't rain here but we are driving the new 2020 CRV hybrid it's the most powerful and fuel efficient CRV Honda's ever made so you guys are probably wondering, how does it drive when you floor it? Well... There's 60. <laughs> so, just like the regular gas CRV, you're gonna be hearing some engine drone because this has a unique CVT. Although Honda likes to say this transmission isn't actually a traditional automatic. It's, it's the engine itself isn't connected to the transmission via direct linkage or something like that. It's, it's married with the electric motor. But regardless, it's got a base, or it's got a naturally aspirated two liter four cylinder with VTEC. Makes about 143 horsepower on its own. Total system output is 212. So this is very much the most powerful CRV Honda's ever made. And this new version, or this hybrid gets around 40 MPG, which we'll talk about the gas miles in a second. But I have to say, compared to the last gas CRV that I drove, which was fairly recently, this one doesn't feel that much quicker. Uh, I expected it to feel faster because it has more horsepower, but keep in mind it, it is about 200 pounds heavier versus the gas only CRV. So I would say the 060 probably feels in their same 7.4 second range, seven and a half maybe. Um, compared to the RAV4 hybrid, I felt the Toyota felt a little bit quicker. It does have slightly more horsepower, but I just got out of an Escape hybrid, which that video should be posting soon. Um, and this feels quicker than the Escape Hybrid, so I am happy to see uh, that the CRV Hybrid is kind of fitting a nice middle ground between the RAV4 Hybrid and the Escape Hybrid. So I have it in sport mode right now, and Honda is amplifying the noise. So basically, when I put my foot down, you can hear it kind of creating some kind of fake engine noise. If you turn off the sport mode and then put your foot down again, you still hear the buzz, but it's not quite as loud. Like the sport mode is almost kind of enhancing the, the buzziness of it. So I don't like the noise. I think most owners will probably turn it off anyways. The sport mode is obviously gonna give you slightly quicker acceleration. It's gonna make the electric motors kick in. This car does have pretty good off the line torque. You can actually feel the torque of the electric motor push you back into the seat. But then, you know, once you push the, the throttle pedal down three, like halfway, then the gas engine comes on, you start hearing the buzz, uh, which is very typical with these hybrid hybridized powertrains. Remember, this is a huge deal for Honda because it's their first ever hybridized SUV with all-wheel drive. Now, the all-wheel drive system in this car is very different versus the one that's in the RAV4. The RAV4 has uh, an electric motor that kind of powers the rear axle. And the problem with that is if it doesn't have any you know, battery power for the, or if the battery is drained for the rear electric motor, you don't have all-wheel drive. This is actually a mechanical linkage. So this is the same kind of real-time four-wheel drive that you get in a gas CRV, which Honda says gives you an advantage. I also th think it's partly the reason why this car does not get quite as good a gas mileage as the RAV4 or the Escape Hybrid. At 38 MPG combined, this is still very good, but just keep in mind that both of its competitors get 40 to 41 MPG combined. So let's try doing an acceleration from a stop here. I'm gonna try to brake torque it a little bit, although I don't think it's gonna make that big of a difference. Remember, this doesn't have a turbo that's gonna spool up, so electric motors should just give you basically all the power off the line immediately. And no shifting as, all, as you guys heard from the CVT but it feels properly peppy. Um, 
I think a lot of owners who buy a CRV, they're going to probably like the way this drives. It's going to drive just like the gas model, although the engine does sound a little bit louder in this car. But if you're thinking the hybrid model is significantly faster than the gas only model, it, it's not because the gas version of the CRV is already one of the quickest offerings in the segment. So, you know, Honda obviously didn't need to make this thing that much faster because it's already pretty quick. Now, we're coming up on some twisty roads here in uh, Arizona, and the CRV has never been really the sportier option. I mean, it can hold its own. Remember, this is based off of the uh, new Honda Civic platform, the 10th gen Civic platform. So it essentially just feels like you're driving a taller uh, Civic, which is what the CRV has always been. Visibility is still very good. Uh, the steering in this car has decent feel. Uh, it's not quite as uh, direct feeling as the Mazda CX-5, but it's way sportier than the last RAV4 and the last um, Rogue that I drove or the last uh, Volkswagen Tiguan. The seats are also pretty comfortable. This interior in general is just very much identical to the gas ball aside from the unique gauges and the transmission, the push button transmission selector. I am noticing the road noise is a little high in this car. Now, I'm going to also say, go out and say that the roads here in this part of Arizona are not the smoothest, so I'm gonna have to wait and reserve judgment when I get one back at home. But I did have a gas only CRV a couple months back in DC and I did notice the road noise was a little bit high. So this is not one of the quieter entries in the segment. CRV hasn't really ever been the, one of the quieter entries in the segment, but it is still one of the most comfortable in the segment. With this hybrid model, you get you know that improved fuel economy, very similar acceleration, comfortable seats. There's very little compromise in terms of the cargo space. The rear seat, Honda says, is the biggest in the segment. Um, at like around 40 inches of legroom back there, which is about two more than what you get in the RAV4. So really the CRV fits perfectly between a, a RAV4 and an Escape hybrid, whereas this doesn't quite get the same gas mileage. Acceleration feels kind of between the two, but you do get the most space in this segment. And Honda has also priced the CRV hybrid pretty well. This one that I'm sitting in here is around $37,000 for the loaded touring, which makes it a couple grand less than a comparably equipped loaded RAV4, although it is missing some equipment that you can get in the Toyota that Honda simply does not offer in the CRV. So just like the gas only version of the CRV, the CRV hybrid has a lot to like about it, especially if you guys are looking for an all new family vehicle to add to your garage. It has a lot of features that I think are really going to do well with a lot of American families. It's extremely comfortable on the inside. It's extremely spacious. It's relatively quiet as well as in the, in the inside. It's full of all the latest tech and safety features. And the fuel economy has significantly been improved over the gas only version of this car. And just my short driving here in Tucson, Arizona, I was able to get around 35 mpg the highest i saw was 37 mpg which is pretty damn good it's very close to what the EP rate, epa rates this car at 40 mpg in the city the lowest i saw it was around 27 mpg that's when i was really flogging the car on some twisty two-lane back roads and really that improvement is going to make a lot of consumers happy when they're in the market for a crv because if you spend most of your time out on the city in stop and go traffic you're going to see a huge improvement in fuel economy over the gas only version. Really where I see a disappointment in the CRV hybrid is when you look at Honda's claim as this car being the most powerful version of the CRV. While on paper that might be the case because this car adds about 200 pounds of weight, it also doesn't have the same kind of top end feel that you have with the turbo engine. At full throttle I found this car to feel slightly more sluggish versus the gas only version of the CRV, but in stop and go traffic off the line, you do notice this has significantly more power off the line, which is really what's better in the real world. So as where the gas only version the CRV can feel a little bit sluggish at throttle tip in because of the turbo lag in the CVT. This car feels pretty peppy off the line. I think that's going to really sell a lot of people uh, on the CRV hybrid. Just know that if you're going to probably pull up next to a turbo CRV, it may not actually be quicker if you're going to look at the actual zero to 60 performance. But with all that said, if you're looking to buy a CRV hybrid, because I asked earlier, is this model the one to get? I actually think it's definitely a model you should consider because of the fuel economy improvements and the fact that this thing can run on a electric power alone. It has all that low end torque. This car is actually a relative bargain compared to the gas only version of the CRV. It starts at around 27,750. That's actually only about $1,200 more expensive over the gas only counterpart. Now keep in mind, all wheel drive comes standard on the hybrid. So it's going to look like it's a little bit more expensive on the gas only version. You have to pay about $1,500 extra to add all wheel drive and then $1,200 extra to add the hybrid version. Now, of course, most people are probably going to buy the EX version that gives you all of the you know extra equipment that you get in this car that most people will buy. It's going to be around $30,000 for an EX, about 32 grand for 
for an EXL. And then if you guys want everything, this top of the line touring hybrid stickers for just over $37,000 with destination. It actually makes the CRV hybrid a little bit cheaper than the last RAV4 XSE hybrid that I tested, and also a little bit cheaper than the Ford Escape hybrid, which both of those vehicles can top $40,000. This car at $37,000 is a relatively good deal. Just keep in mind, it doesn't have some of the premium equipment like a panoramic sunroof, cooled seats, or head-up display. You cannot get that in the CRV like you can in some of the competitors. But with all that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on this 2020 Honda CRV hybrid. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews. Like us on Facebook. And as always, guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.